Hello, uh, Steady on Roblox here, and today I'm going to be talking about um, the Roblox typical Roblox state skateboard, which is what I've got here, um, and how Roblox updates have actually broken this, and how you can fix it. Uh, I won't go into too much detail about why it's broken. Actually, no, I will. I'll go into some reasonable detail about why it's broken, why it's broken, but most of this video will be about how to fix it, right? Um, so firstly, we're going to see how this works. So this is the typical Roblox skateboard, and this one is broken, right? This is uh, a broken skateboard that I'm going to show you how to fix, right? Um, so, when you get this tool, right, uh, you, you probably assume that this handle here, which is a skateboard, is the skateboard you ride, which is not actually true. Like, if I play the game, right, then I have the skateboard... I have a skateboard here, right? But you'd expect this skateboard to be the skateboard that you ride, but it's actually just the skateboard you hold, right? But the actual skateboard that you use is not in the game. It's actually inserted from an external source, which is uh, Roblox. And this is the skateboard that's inserted uh, from, from like, Roblox, Roblox assets, right? So this is a Roblox asset, and it's inserted using this script, right? But because of recent Roblox updates, this can't happen anymore because this is in a local script on the client side which means that um, it can't insert any assets like any models from the insert service because of a new update right um, so what this script is actually doing is it's trying to it's going through all of this process where it's uh, equipping it and then you click and then it's trying to insert it using this function but it can't because it's not allowed to right so You'll get all the way through all this code, and then all the way up to here. And then you'll get a, a, a uh, error return, right? Okay, so the reason for that is... Um, as I said, Roblox updates, right? And this is, they're pretty old Roblox updates. This is on the Roblox developer forum. Um, and this was done November, right? Uh, on the 17th of November. And I put something on my Twitter page about how they've broken their skateboards, so I thought, now, I may as well actually say how to fix your skateboards, because otherwise it's kind of just a bit annoying just saying they're not telling you how to fix it, right? Pretty simple fix to most people, but if you don't understand um, scripting that much, then it's reasonably confusing one. And if you haven't, if you don't keep up to date with the Roblox developer for it, then you won't understand it either, right? Um... So this, this article will be in the description because it's very useful. Very useful. Um, and there are two ways you can fix this, right? So firstly, if you have a really small game and you just want to play with your friends and just use a skateboard, right? You can easily do that using this. Um, sorry. This thing, right? This is literally, this is a member of Insert Service which... Uh, which... Um, sorry. Which uh, essentially lets you return to the exact same uh, inserting ways of bef of, it, of before, right? Because um, this al al allows local scripts to insert models right, using the insert service. Now, so you're probably wondering, why don't I just do that? Because surely um, why don't I just return it to how it was? What's the, what's, what's the problem, right? Well, there is an actual reason behind Roblox um, making this update. It's not just, they don't want to just, I don't know about it, but I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure they don't want to just annoy everyone, right? Uh, at least I hope not, right? Um, so the reason they've done this, really, and they've said, and a lot of these reasons are on here, uh, one of the main reasons is because of how vulnerable uh, the insert service is to exploiting, right? Because anything on the client, which has any power, will be easily manipulated by exploiters, right? So you don't want anything, really, that's important to the functionality of the game in the client. You want everything to be requested from the client using something like a remote event or remote function or something like that. Um, uh, coming from a client script to a server script and then all of the important stuff is managed in the server script. And you can even use a... Uh, you can either authenticate that the... the um, what it's trying to do is... Right, right, from the server script to make sure that it's not an exploiter 
telling the service script to do something, right? Um, but in client scripts, it's a lot easier to manipulate what the script does because it's actually inside the client. It's like, it's like um, there's the Roblox server, which is which manages the whole game, uh, and it has all the all the parts and everything like this, right? And it sends data backwards and forwards to the client. But in a client script such as this local script, this is actually managed directly from the player, right? So it's a lot more easy for the player to manipulate. So if you don't, sorry, but I got a message. Right. Anyway, uh, so, um, um, lost my track. Oh yeah. So, you can just use this. Uh, you can just use this, and it will work fine. But it's something you really want to avoid because it leaves your place vulnerable to exploiters, and it also uh, it's it's less efficient really because. If you have one server script like I do here, right? Because this is what I did earlier. Um, then look how this is like nothing here, right? But if I wanted to make it so that every single... Say I wanted to change the texture of every single skateboard in the server, right? Then usually I would um, I would edit the local script, actually. It's, it's not that... It, <laughs> well, it's like if I wanted to change the texture of every uh, skateboard on the server, I could just change one value in here. Instead of changing the local script, um, it, it's it's just a lot better, right? Anyway, um, so this is this is what so this is one of the easy fixes you really want to use that will work fine, right? It's it's not something I recommend doing. Um, but if you actually want to do it properly, if you want to make it so that it's very it's hard for exploiters to uh, use your insert service, which is a very powerful tool. Um, then you're going to want to do this, right? So here's a skate tool I made earlier. Yeah, I just ripped a bit. Um, so here is the working skate tool. I'll just name it. Yeah, which one? Which? Okay, so this is the working skate, skate tool, right? And straight away you might notice that I'm scrolling right now, but nothing's happening. So this, this, this script is a lot shorter, right? Um, and the reason for that is because the whole insert function, and I'll get the old script, right, so this is the old script, the whole insert function which is in the old script here has been removed because this is all now managed on the server, right? Um, and for it to be managed on the server, all that's happening is it's calling a remote event in the workspace. And then the server is reacting to this remote event and running a function. So this is the server script here, right? and this, what, what, what this is doing is as soon as the game starts, right, it will create a remote event, and it will, um, and then it will put the remote event in the game workspace, and it will name it request skateboard, right? Which means that any of the client scripts that want to spawn a skateboard, all they have to do is find the remote event in the workspace, right? And, and here I've defined it as skateboard, um, and then all this is doing is just sort of like um, to make sure it's just a, it's just like a, to prevent glitches, really, right? This isn't compulsory but I would recommend you do it. Right. So this basically just makes sure that the skateboard actually exists because it might not. Not the skateboard sorry the um, the remote event actually exists because uh, if it doesn't exist then you're going to get a lot of errors and it's gonna, everything's going to be weird. Right? Um, so what this is doing is it's firing the remote event in the workspace and then the server script which is in server script service which is not uh, editable in game which makes it even harder for exploiters to do anything. Um, receives this this request right see this is a yeah on on the request being fired uh it it, it runs code right and with remote events it automatically sends the players uh the, the player if it's if it's from a client script which is here from a local script it automatically sends the player as the first argument right so if you're ever using local scripts you always want to make sure you use the player as the first argument because otherwise it won't work then we've got the ID, which is the asset ID, and this is because I think, I'm not completely sure, but I think there can be different skateboard models, right? So if you have a different skateboard model, then uh, make sure you, well, if you use my code, make sure you put the right ID up here, because otherwise it might give you a Builders Club skateboard when you actually want, I don't know, EBC Builders Club, right? Um, so it calls this, and this is what, what this does is basically what this used to do, right? But it's a lot more secure since it's on the server. What this does is, 
it already has the player and it has the ID as two local variables, right? From the on request event, from from the from the um, remote event, right? That's in the workspace that's been uh, activated using the local script, right? I just click something. Um, so what it's doing is it's actually as soon as the event is fired, it's defining skateboard as insert service. So it's ins and I've already defined insert service here, which is the insert service. Funnily enough, um, and it's loading the asset, which is the ID that this is sent. If you see, uh, here we go, the skateboard ID. So this is sent the skateboard ID. So it's loading the asset in, but it's not actually putting it into the place yet, right? And then as soon as this is loaded, it's inserted into the place, right? And this will automatically put it in the workspace. Um, and then it's defining the, the player's torso, which is obviously the player, which we've already got from the other script using the local, the, using the remote event. Um, and then it's so the torso is the player's characters character and then torso, right? Um, because that's where we want to put it roughly. We're using so we're just using that as a rough position because we don't actually spawn it on here. Because if we respond it at the exact position of the torso, it would just sort of fling off the map, right? So this is what this is for. I'll, I'll come to that in a second. And what this does is it makes sure that the skateboard actually exists. Because if 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 uh, if it for some reason the insert service didn't insert anything, then it would there would be no errors right it would just stop that'd be it um and it would mean that the player wouldn't get a skateboard but the thing is it's so rare that this would happen it doesn't really matter right every now and then there might be maybe one in a million chance that the player won't get the skateboard but it's better than there being a, like a fatal error that might completely destroy a load of stuff right but this, in this case it probably wouldn't but I'm, i just put it there as a as habit right um so then this is what the, what this does is it finds the children uh, as in the parts inside the skateboard uh, and it checks basically um, if it has any children because one of the reasons it might not have any children is because maybe you spawned it and it fell off the map right so if you spawned it and it fell off the map then when you come down to here and you and you move the skateboard uh, to to in front of the player it won't be able to move the skateboard because there's nothing to move because there's no parts inside it so what this does is it makes sure that the uh, skateboard has parts because if it doesn't have parts then they will turn up uh, will return an error um, and as you can see here this is literally just naming the skateboard the the player's name the player's user ID sorry and then skateboard right and I guess you could use this uh, using another script you could use this to make sure that people couldn't use these other skateboards right, if you really wanted to um, yeah that's basically it so the, all this does is it just moves the skateboard to the to the place player's torso but slightly, slightly, uh, a slight increment away, so it doesn't actually um, mess around with um, player's torso, right? So this should work perfectly. I don't know if it will. <laughs> It'd be kind of embarrassing if it doesn't. Yeah, this is it, right? So there you go. See, spawns immediately, right? and you can just move around on this as much as you want. Um, that's the old skateboard, and I can show you this won't work. I mean, if it did work, that'd be kind of oh, it probably will work because I did the thing before. Uh, let's see if it works. Uh, it should work, because if you use step one... Okay, uh, it doesn't work, but that's probably just something to do with... I don't know. But, um... Yeah, that's basically it. So, all of the code that I've used in this will be um, in the description on my website. I have an article about this. So, if you didn't understand anything I've said in this video, it will all be on the website, so you can understand it there. And it's pretty simple. Uh, on there and all of the code that I put in this is also on on my website um, and I also put the Roblox development uh, forums art article on in the description as well um, yeah that's it uh, you can also follow me on Twitter yeah that's literally it Twitter the I only have Twitter um, if you want to uh, that'll be at the end of the okay bye <laughs>